Jairus of all trades, master of none, real life Iron Man rocket launcher build, part eight. Let's finish this. I wanna get a really good finish on these armor pieces, just like I've got on the launcher part. So I'm going to sand them, paint them with universal bonding primer to make sure everything sticks really well. And then I'll do primer and I'll continue to sand with higher and higher grades of sandpaper until I can tell that the final coat isn't gonna have scratches or anything goofy in it. And also be able to tell pretty much how it's gonna look once it's finally painted. Let's get started. Now that I'm nearly finished sanding these, I figured I would explain something real quick about why you sand before you paint. So there's mechanical bond and there's chemical bond. And when you sand something, it puts scratches in the surface. And then when the paint dries into those scratches, it's mechanically bonded to it. Now, this is similar to PVC. There's like one other chemical in it. So it's like a polyvinyl chloride type plastic. Anyway, when, when you paint something like this, if the chemicals in the paint allow it to bond chemically to the plastic or whatever else you're, you're painting, it gives you a permanent bond also, just like mechanical, but it's even harder to take off. But I need to sand this to get it nice and smooth anyway, but if you're gonna paint something, you need to do that. And that's also why it's important that everything is extremely clean, because if you have any grease or oil, it fills the cracks so you won't have mechanical bonding, and it also creates a barrier so that you can't have a chemical bond. Make sure your stuff is clean. I need these lifted up so that I can paint them. I'm not painting the inside, but I need to get all the edges. So I made this little rig where I put these cups in there and that holds it up. So I'm gonna hot glue this to the inside. That way it holds my pieces while I paint them. And then I can put them in here to dry. Now which way do we go? Is the question to ask? There are so many choices that I just read the back of the can and it specifically says for PVC on the back, as well as a bunch of other stuff. But that means that this is probably going to chemically bond to my Kydex. Primer like this is basically paint glue. You don't need very much. Why would you put on a huge thick layer of glue? You just want a tiny bit in between. So you put on a really light layer. It doesn't have to be completely opaque and covering it because you're just gluing on the next layer of paint, which is filler primer to get all the little scratches out. So now I'm just going to wet sand with 400 grit before I put the final coat of red paint on them. And I'm gonna wet sand because wet sanding, you just get water all over everything and sand with it. It's more consistent, your sandpaper doesn't get clogged. It's just better to do that. So now I'm gonna wet sand and paint them red, red, and gold. All sanded up ready for paint. You can see that I sanded and I went down through one layer of primer, but I didn't go through the second layer. That's important, don't do that. Now multiple light coats until I get a nice, wet, shiny, awesome finish and then let these things dry. Before you start your final coat, you're gonna wanna make sure there's absolutely no dust or debris at all whatsoever on your part before you start to paint it. So when you're painting, you wanna hit all the edges and the hard to reach spots first. That way you don't spray too much paint on the parts that are easy to paint. Everybody always says multiple light coats, but they never explain why. If you put multiple light coats on and let it flash off when you add the next light coat and the next light coat after that, the paint has lost a lot of its solvent. So it'll, it basically gets thicker and you can put more coats on and you won't get runs in it. That way you can get a nice glossy, even perfect surface. Yeah. Beautiful. I tried out four different colors of red before I found one that I thought looked just like the color of red that's on Iron Man's suit. So this is Regal Red. Thought you might want to know that. It's Rust-Oleum Regal Red. Look at the gold. I'm going to throw a coat of this acrylic clear lacquer on the gold. We'll see if I jacked it up once this dries. I couldn't find any red gloves to make my Iron Man gloves, so I got these because they were cheap, and I'm going to paint them. And I've tried to paint fabric before, and it's just difficult. But there is a way to do it. You just have to do a lot of layers of primer before you do the color that you want, and eventually it'll start to take it. You can see some parts take the paint, and others just absorb it into the fabric, and you can't see it at all. So you just do light coats like that, give it 15, 20 minutes to dry, do another coat, and keep doing it over and over until it turns white, 
and then once it turns white, it'll take the colored paint that you're gonna put on top. It's time consuming, but it works. Check out the moth that came to visit me in the garage while I was working on the Iron Man stuff. Look at the size of him. See that? It's gigantic. Mothman prophecies right there. Spooky. And here's my finished painted glove. After probably 10 coats of primer and red paint, it's done and it's red. And now I get to put the armor on it. Now it's time for a huge thank you to the Patreon supporters that I have. And this is the kind of thing that Patreon is there for, because I would have had to take probably an entire day to try to mock up all the little armor pieces on this glove. And I didn't have to, because I was able to afford a PDF template from David Guyton, who makes metal armor, and I'm using his templates to make the Kydex pieces for this glove so that I don't have to come up with the patterns myself, which would take forever. So thanks, Patreon people. Let's make an Iron Man glove. Want to see a magic trick? I just take this paper with the templates on it, I shake it, and then bam! It just turns into all my templates cut out of Kydex, magically. <laughs> Seriously though, it took forever to get these cut out. This took like four or five hours. But now, I'm ready to shape them, and then sand them, and paint them, and put them on the glove. Which shouldn't take as long, but still not going to be quick. That took an absolutely outrageous amount of time to get these things ready. But now that it's done, all I have to do is heat form them to the glove and then paint them and stick them on. Now I just need to get some paint on them and put them on. Here we go, hot glue, skewers, and a piece of foam to hold them up. That way I can get them covered in paint completely. All right, now I just gotta give them a little wet sand and do red. They're dry and they're wet sanded, but I ended up going through a lot of the primer to get them sanded and looking perfect. Well, not perfect, but close. So I'm gonna coat them real light with universal browning primer again before I throw the red on. Here we go. In case you're wondering how long this took, it's probably like 16 hours worth of work right here. These all need to dry really thoroughly before I try to smash them onto the glove and glue them in place. So this is gonna go off to the side while I start working on the actual launcher again. First thing to do is to get this on there because this needs to get permanently mounted so that I can make the pickup points for where the bottom part's gonna attach to it. First really difficult step done. This right here is the limit switch. The launcher has to be in the up position because the servo arm comes forward and pushes that switch and makes the connection so that you can only launch the rocket when it's up. Because you don't want to launch it when it's down by accident. That would suck. Which, since I'm explaining this right now, I might as well talk about the electronics since I'm going to be doing it as I go. Alright, here we go. Electronic system. First system. You got a battery. You got two wires coming off, it, positive and negative. One goes directly to the rocket to set it off, right? So there's our rocket. The other one goes to the limit switch first. The limit switch has to get pushed by the servo before it works, and then it goes to another switch that you push. And then when you push that switch, it goes to the rocket, and then the circuit is made, and the rocket goes off. Super easy. Second system runs off of a second battery, and that second battery has a power and a ground wire, right? One will be interrupted with a master kill switch. And then those wires will go to my two servo controllers, right? And then those servo controllers will decide whether the arms are in the up or down position. And I've got it set up so that the up position is closed and the down position is open. 
So they have power wires that come off of them and those will go to my two sets of servos, right? So those will power these guys. Then there's signal wires that come off. Now the signal wires are gonna be on a switch that changes which one sends out signal, right? So when you hit this switch, that makes the launcher and the arms open and close. You know what I mean? And then when those servos open, that's what hits that limit switch that keeps you from firing the rocket when it's in the down position. Now this may have been easier if I did it all with a microcontroller, but I don't know how to program microcontrollers and I planned on learning so that I could do this, but I realized that I could actually do it pretty easily without using one because I didn't have to time the open and closing. That's why I had to build all those little systems to keep it from uh, screwing up whenever it closed. If I had a microcontroller running it, I would have avoided that problem altogether and it might look a little cooler because it doesn't do it all at once. It would have been timed, which would have been awesome. Anyway, there is a channel on YouTube and I search for people that are doing stuff like I do all the time and I found this channel and it's brand new. This guy just posted one video, it's a trailer and if I'm not mistaken it's called Superhero Armory and he's building Iron Man stuff and it is serious. I'll, I'll show you a clip right now. What if you could construct a revolutionary suit of armor? Armor that gave you incredible powers and was capable of amazing feats. What if you had the technology to become a superhero? Now obviously you can see in some of that he's got some stuff going on. He's probably running microcontrollers. I don't know how he'd run all of that stuff without it, but I hope that he teaches me how to use microcontrollers in his build videos. Um, I'm gonna try to get a hold of this guy and see if he'll tell me how to do it. Anyway, you should check out that channel. I'll put a link in the description, that way you can go see Superhero Armory because the builds that are coming out for that are probably gonna be exciting. I know, I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, that's the electrical system. Super easy, not much to it. Let's get on with the build. Time to set up the magnetic removable attachment points for the bottom section. More steel stick and big, powerful neodymium magnets. That's why you need to put regular epoxy on the stick weld. That stuff just falls off. Time to do the tops, bottom side. Now it should snap on just like so, all right, good to go. Holy crap. Well, it's strong. <laughs> that thing's serious. All right, it's time to really start getting into the electronics. And before I do, these are the servo testers that I'm using. They're cheap, I'll put a link in the description and you can take them apart so that you can mount it real small and then you just peel the outside off and then throw it in. They're simple. And these are the batteries that I got. I'll put a link to them too. And they have overdraw protection, so I have to desolder that off of one and then put my own wires on it so that I can fire the rocket with it because otherwise it won't let the rocket fire. hot glue sometimes. Batteries mounted. Now it's time to modify the extracted servo tester. This button switches modes. We don't want that so I'm going to glue that tight 
I'm gonna snip all these off, that way I can solder directly onto it, that way it's smaller, that way it fits inside where I want it to. Figured I'd mention this now instead of later. On the back of my servo controllers, I covered them with hot glue and electrical tape to insulate them because they will both be sitting on the aluminum frame for the rocket lifter launcher thing. And it would fry everything and ground it out. Gotta insulate stuff. Perfect fit. Kind of have wires going everywhere right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this gold piece on permanently. That way I can terminate some stuff to its switches and get it located. That way the wire mess isn't quite so bad. It's starting to bother me. I need to haul ass on this one. I got four major points that I need to get epoxied and get this thing lined up on. I hope I don't screw this up. Oh man, good thing I did that. I screwed that up for sure. Woo! Got it. Do you know how bad it would have been if I had screwed that up? Whew. Now I'm gonna do some stuff that you can't see because the spaces are too tight for me to work and be able to film at the same time. It's called wiring. I'll show you when I'm done, what I did. All right, this channel is all about me being Jairus of all trades, master of none, which means that I should be a jack of all trades and a master of none, and this is very apparent right now, because right now I have a lot of issues. Everything opened and closed really well before, and now it doesn't anymore, and I don't know why, so I trimmed some magnets off because I don't know what the signal is that servo testers put out, and it, it could be screwed up by these super powerful neodymium rare earth magnets that I've been using to hold the front cover on. So I took two of them off that are closest to all the controls to make sure that it's not screwing with it but I can't test it because my batteries are dead and now I'm trying to charge the batteries that are in this because they got too dead to make everything operate correctly. It's been massive problems and it's been like a day and a half of me working on this trying to sort out everything that's going wrong and make it work. But everything is so compact because I have to have it inside of armor that looks like Iron Man that it's causing me a lot of issues. I have to be very careful with everything that I do to make sure I don't screw up wires and mess stuff up. And I also made this super awesome plug right here because not only do I have to make everything fit, but I have to make it so that you can put it on and turn it on and turn it off and have everything connected and still be able to charge the batteries and reach the things so nothing can be permanently mounted because it all has to be taken off of you. So that poses a whole set of new problems. So since this is removable, I set up a four wire plug that goes into this so you can hold it up here before the magnets connect, plug that in and then snap it on and then I have my wires out here getting ready to put on the glove to have plugs on that. So basically you'll put this on, you'll put the glove on, you'll put this on, you'll connect those wires, you'll tuck them into place and then you'll bring this panel over and you'll plug that in and then you'll set one set of magnets, you'll organize the plug so that it's not in the way and then you'll snap that into place because otherwise, how would you organize it? Because these batteries won't fit anywhere else, and that's the minimum size that I can use to run this kind of thing, because otherwise you're talking about a brick like this. Like, these things are monster. That's not gonna fit inside of here anywhere. So to have this self-contained, you have to overcome a lot of problems, and that's what I'm trying to do right now. And it's not working out. So as soon as I figure out what the issue is, I'm gonna tell you, which will probably be right about now. All right, I got it fixed. It's not necessarily figured out, but it's fixed. And for me to explain all the issues that I had with this thing would take too, way too long and the video would be excessive in length. So after this video comes out, I'm gonna release another one that explains all the stuff that was wrong with this. And I'd appreciate it if you have any knowledge about electronic stuff, if you'd watch that video and you can comment and let me know what you think is wrong. You can even guess and let me know what's wrong with it right now, if you think you can tell from it's just not working. Anyway, yeah, time to get rid of this. 
Time to work on the glove and get this put together. So this is all gonna get glued on with epoxy, so I need to rough all of these up so that I have mechanical adhesion to the glove. And I'm gonna epoxy everything in place and make sure I've got it all good to go to connect the wires and the buttons and uh, those parts I'm not gonna show you or final painting to make this thing look really awesome. And unfortunately, the hacksmith is in England right now, so as soon as he gets back, you'll get to see it finalized and used and all that stuff with the collaboration. So stay tuned for that. I'm sorry that it's gonna take a little bit longer. I wish I could have had this done on time, but problems. <laughs> Now that that's done, it's time to mix more epoxy than I care to think about. Alright, so there's one more piece that I have to put on, and it's this one that goes right there. And then I have a little bit of reforming to do, and I'm done. But, I can't put this one on until I reshape it. Because, I made this little lens to go right here. And it's not going to do anything, but how ridiculous would it be if I had an Iron Man glove and didn't have that in the center? This is just a wide-angle mirror lens that you stick on your side mirrors on your car. It costs like a dollar. So anyway, I'm going to put that on. And these I can grind off because of the way I glued them on and not have to worry about it. But this top piece is going to be difficult to shape to it with it on the glove. And everything would be too close together, so I'm going to wait to put that one on. And then I'm going to put this one on. And then the glove is done. This Iron Man build took entirely too long to get to this point. And remember, this is a collaboration with the Hacksmith, so if you want to see this thing completed and done and working, remember to watch his channel and make sure you subscribe to him, that way you can see all those videos. And also, there's not going to be a lull in videos on my channel, because I'm going right into the next project very soon. So remember, check out David Guyton's channel. That's where I got the templates for the armored glove and uh, Superhero Armory, the other channel where a guy is starting to do some Iron Man stuff that looks really crazy and definitely way better at electronics than I am. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already to see this thing and my next project, which is completely original and probably the craziest thing that I've ever built. I'll see you guys soon. Back from the dead. Also, a great big thanks to my two engineering buddies, Dan and Chris, who helped me out a lot and gave up a lot of their time to try to help me out and figure out what was wrong with this thing. I owe you guys.